Hi, I'm Lily, and this is the Untangled Knitting Podcast. Hi, folks. Welcome. I'm Lily, and this is the Untangled Knitting Podcast. If you are new here, I am an art curator and mom, and I live with my five-year-old daughter and two-year-old son and hilarious husband in Oakland, California. This is a podcast where I talk about my knitting projects and overcoming perfectionism and the freedom that can come from creativity. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. So happy to have you here. And I just love our community. If you'd like to get in touch, easiest way is usually on Instagram or comment here below. I try to get to every comment um, with a like or a heart if I can't answer in full. And I am not great on my Ravelry page. I'm working on it, but it's not quite there. So if you want more details though about any of the patterns or yarns that I talk about today or any other details, they're always in the description box below this video title. So um, without further ado, I guess we should get into the knitting. I am wearing my Coconuts cardigan. It is a slightly overcast, slightly chilly day here in Oakland, which feels so nice. We had the hottest week that I have ever had in the Bay Area last week. Um, I work in San Francisco um, and I have never been so hot in the city of San Francisco as last week. It was wild and people were just not used to it too. So I think there was just like major culture shock situation. And so now that it's really cooled down and there's this nice kind of, um, marine layer haze, I think people are really starting to enjoy it and they're not as freaked out. So things are feeling really nice here in the Bay Area. A um, little bit of housekeeping. I do have a giveaway winner today, which is super exciting. And I'll be talking about that later as I talk about the project that it's related to. And, oh, was I talking about what I was wearing? Yes, what, and I am get to wear it because it's overcast. That's where we were, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I am wearing the Coco Knits Sarah cardigan and it is knit in Sea Change Fibers Sea Cliff Worsted. It is a super scrummy, scrunchy, squishy yarn with a ton of stitch definition, but also a lot of um, softness and not fluff, but um, I guess squish. I know that people say that word a lot, but it's true in this case. And it has an integrated button band, which now that I've done my champagne cardigan by Petite Knit, I appreciate this so much. Um, I actually go into lots of details about this piece, I think in my very first episode, but I love it on a weekend, just throwing it on. It's kind of my professional weekend mom sweater <laughs> and it is super comfy cozy and perfect for the sweater that we're having. So yeah, it's really nice. I have lots to talk about and I have three finished objects and two knit along projects. So I'm feeling quite excited about talking about all of those. But the first finished object that I have to talk about is kind of, <sighs> okay, I love it, but I'm also like deeply sad about it. So this is my finished Lento in Wandering Flock. I love the way it turned out in so many ways. 
super proud of that striping detail. The arms are exactly what I wanted. The raglan is perfect. The stripe layout worked out beautifully. I'm really couldn't be happier with the fit and the overall garment. And I was getting ready to, I had blocked it. It looked great blocked. I was getting ready to put it on for some finished object photos before I shot this video this weekend. And then I noticed something and that's the collar. And when I folded over the collar and I showed the collar on my last podcast, when I folded it over, you guys, I went over like not just one, but I think two stitches. So do you see how it's like slanted? I'm, <laughs> I'm actually devastated because I love this sweater and I was like, okay, I can fix this. And I tried just reblocking just the collar to try to just like squidge stuff over and have these rib, these, um, yeah, ribbing, um, knit stitches look straight. And then that wasn't really working. And I was like, okay, don't panic. I was going to put in da, 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 the petite knit, um, sweater, elastic anyway like that's something I had planned to do fabulous so I I went kind of hog wild with it and actually like tried to sew it into each stitch on the front and the back so that they would like line up straight and it is maybe a little bit better but you can still see like a really aggressive slant to those stitches so now I honestly like I'm I probably have to cut off the collar and re-knit the collar. Right? I mean, I think that's what I have to do. But I haven't even gotten into it because I'm just really disappointed. <laughs> also, I know how to do this and I did it beautifully on the other lento that I made for Yom. It's like perfect. And I guess I just, I just must have jumped like two stitches over as I was knitting them. And I, I'm like kind of disappointed in myself, to be honest. And I was even thinking like, maybe I shouldn't film with this and I should try to fix it first. And, and I was like, no, this is my knitting journal. You know, this is what we talk about. So not everything is going to be perfect. And in fact, that's the whole point of working through this, like perfectionism, right? that I need to be more comfortable and I'm, I am more comfortable sharing things that are not ideal. So I'm just gonna sit with it for a second. Um, I might like just wear it to do like a school pickup run or something and see how I feel. But I think it's pretty noticeable. So that's where we are. I haven't even Googled like how to do it I'm, there might be an answer out there, but I was just, I was just all in my feelings about it. It's a great sweater though. I love the sweater. I just have to fix the neckline. And so it's not, it is a finished object, but maybe it's not technically a finished object. For those of you who might be new, this is the Lento sweater and it is from, I think it was originally published in um, Line Magazine. It is knit, I knit mine in one strand of the Wandering Flocks DK. And I actually alternated two different strands of mohair throughout of corresponding mohairs. So what I was using from the Wandering Flock is their navy, which is quite beautiful. And then this is the Alpine Blue, oh, so nice. And then the pink stripes are mauve, darling. And then each of these, can I hold them all? I can. Each of these has a corresponding mohair, but the second mohair that I held throughout was the highly variegated Sunsets in Brooklyn, which is half pink and half blue. 
and I I think that the the color scheme really worked out for me. I'm really happy with that. The way that all went down um, was great. And yeah, I just have a little, we'll call it editing. We'll just call it some editing that I need to do. So that's FO number one. And yeah, that it, it is what it is. FO number two is my great gingham, which I did an entire episode about my modifications for with the wonderful Jen Patricelli, and that is on my this same YouTube channel. And I think it was really, really a great project. I'm so glad that I did it. I love it. I have already worn it. It's just what I wanted out of this project. It is the Great Gingham Raglan by Jessie May of Jessie May Designs. And I made alterations and modifications to the neckline using a worksheet, a free worksheet from designer and professional grader, Jen Petroselli. And this is knit in spin cycle, dyed in the wool in the colorway Cold Comfort and in Chicory from the Camilla Fiber Company, both sport weight yarns. And yeah, if you want all the kind of gooey, yummy details, definitely check out the earlier podcast. I re the things that I love about it most are probably this mirroring that happens with the raglan pattern on that raglan sleeve. I just think it looks so crisp and really professional. I was a true believer in the twisted rib on the bottom. I think it looks really great and also on the collar. And I was a little aggressive with how I did these sleeves, but this was kind of what I exactly what I envisioned and they look really good on because they really do hug my um, wrist right here. And then it goes out a teeny bit and then it's straight and flat. So I'll insert some pictures, but I'm just really, really happy with it. I did catch my floats that were longer than three stitches, so it's not very exciting inside, but it, I think it, I didn't need to worry about the kind of bubbling or any blocking or anything like that. It just, it did its thing. So it kind of feels like at the end of an era because I've been planning to make this sweater since I started this podcast. It hadn't come out yet when I started the podcast, but I had, it had been on social media and I had started the hat, which came out first. And so, yeah, it just feels really nice to have this done and to have it ready for fall and just ready to rock, you know? feels really good. So that is finished object number two. And then finished object number three was like the surprise of the season. My test knit for Amy Shear, and I will do proper finished object photos later and post it for when this sweater comes out. I love it. It is fabulous. It is the Anne's Puff Sleeve. And it is a three quarter length sweater in the pattern. I did it as little short sleeve puffs. There's beautiful eyelet raglan details. Oh, oh, there's an end that I didn't snip. Everything's woven in, but I didn't snip that one, I guess, after blocking. I'm super proud of this piece. I think that it's kind of my best underarm to date, to be honest. Very happy with the, the way the underarms all worked out, which is great, especially for a short sleeve piece. You really, I feel like there's more attention to that area in a way, so you wanna make it really crisp and clean. And I loved my I-cord bind off on the arms. It's really, I, I was able to, and I think part of this is from doing my bit with Jen and that worksheet and getting through some of my math stuff is I was really able to 
make some good guesses about how the math would work out and how many stitches I wanted um, on this arm circumference because Amy gives a circumference for this kind of part of your arm and not up here. And those are what the directions are for. And I just modified all of that kind of on my own and it worked out really well. So I'm really proud of that. I also did my first, um, my first ever pleat. So pr quite chuffed with my pleat. So it's here. I hope that looks okay. I think it looks great. I mean, I think it worked out super well. And then it does this little puff when it's out. Can you see that? I'm not sure. I think it looks good though. Show camera. Oh yeah, you can totally see that. Nice. Yay. And yeah, I think this is going to be a great fall piece. Very excited. It is knit in. So Amy shares the designer. It's knit in Rory Knits, 100% Merino, non superwash in the colorway Bay, which is, it's really the perfect kind of color for today perfect Bay Area, kind of hazy, foggy moment. I think it has great stitch definition, as you can see here, and it's nice and soft and also holds that pleat really nicely. So it's kind of the best, maybe the best of all worlds, at least for this project. So that was super satisfying, right? Like three finished objects. I felt really good. I blocked them all within the same like 24 hours. I had a like hashtag block party and that was really fun. And I was just feeling really good about that. Bummed about the color on my lento, but I'm gonna have to just let that go. I'll figure it out. There's an, always another step, another process gonna be okay. I'm gonna take a minute to get some of my tea. All right, so this is like a podcasty, knitting podcasty thing. I can't decide if I like it when podcasters remind me to get a beverage or some, sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, how pleasant. Let's like all drink our tea and have a beverage. Um, and then sometimes like, I'm gonna do me. I don't need to go pop up and get anything. But if you'd like to go get yourself a cup of tea, please do. Mm. I actually brought up the bag from the tea that I'm drinking because it's one of my favorites. Sorry, I do totally have some fluff from my Lento. And this is my favorite green tea. It's the Rose City Gin Matcha from Smith Tea Works or Smith Tea Maker. And Smith Tea is from Portland. I think my mom discovered it when she was there or discovered it for me and my crew. I hadn't heard of it before when she was visiting my brother up there. This is so good. I love a Gin Matcha in general because it has toasted rice in it usually and it just is this kind of nutty flavor that I really enjoy but the added floral notes are really nice so if you're a green tea drinker I highly recommend this it's perfect it's what I drink most afternoons I like to drink a tea instead of a coffee but right now also I just wanted to keep the chill kind of overcast vibe it's really it's it's working Loverly. Okay, so FOs are done. On to whips, both of which are brand new ish and not necessarily what I had proposed initially. So, first I'll do the Alpen Glow, which you guys heard me talk about last time. The Alpen Glow is the, oops, sorry, I hope folks didn't see that pattern flash. Apologies, Ms. Andrea Mowry. This is the 
Alpen Glow sweater. It's Andrea Mowry's Rhinebeck sweater for this year, which she's designed in partnership with Magpie Fibers and Spin Cycle Fibers. So we all know my my love for Spin Cycle color work. And I made my color choices. And I made a different choice when it comes to the main body color. It's not gonna look that different, but it actually is. <laughs> okay, so, and I put it on a barber cord for a little fit check. There we go, so far so good. And here we are. I've got my collar already down. There we are, and I'm done with the kind of initial color work section of the yoke. I am gonna do, I think, two rounds more before I split for sleeves. And I've made some modifications because that's just what I do. Before I talk through those though, I will talk through my final choices in terms of the, um, uh, Yarn, sorry, excuse me. So I stuck with, of course, my Ghost Ranch Spin Cycle, love, love, love. And I went with the Tactical, which I totally adore for my contrast color of Floof. And this is the Magpie Plume which is a cashmere and silk blend. It's really luxe, like it feels great, which is why I made some of the modifications I did. And then this contrast color is the Bois de Rose, Rosewood from La Bayana May. Excuse me while I untangle this. It's so nice. I love this color so much and I think it plays really well with the tactical, it's like very, someone mentioned that they thought it was a romantic colorway. And I agree. I feel like this is very woodsy and romantic. And I paired that with the, the same corresponding mohair because why not? Adds a little shimmer glimmer to it, which I think comes through nicely. And then what I decided to do for the main body was instead of a the Merino Sport, which was just, it was too far off, frankly, from the spin cycle in terms of texture and grip. And it was, it was quite, quite thinner and slippy, more slippery. Instead, I went with Helix, which is also La Vienna May held double. So this is the Winterfell color. There's like a bazillion yards in a skein. I think bazillion is not the technical term, so I'll check that for you. Just a second. Where's my ball band? I know it's in here. Um, unless it's not in here. It's something wild. It's something like 700, almost 800 yards. It's amazing. And I think a really good value. It's also, I did a little checking with other parts of my stash. The Helix is the same yarn composition of Falkland and Coriadale as the Cori Worsted. So to me, that's kind of, kind of interesting, right? The Cori Worsted is usually dyed on, I think, on a grayer base, but my Cori Worsted in the same color, Winterfell, is nearly identical to the Helix in terms of feel. So I just thought that was a kind of interesting tidbit for any um, La Bienname connoisseurs. <laughs> and then after I was kind of all set up to do the Helix Held Double uh, instead of the Merino Sport, I realized that I had a really nice Da, 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 mohair that would just bling it out again. Just kind of go for it. I mean, now this is like, it's okay. So this went from like, oh, what a nice autumnal sweater to now I'm like, 
ooh, I, I'm just like, what is the phrase for it? It's extra. This is extra. I've just like made, it was already extra, I think, with the plume, like cashmere and, but I just went for it. And because I was feeling so extra, I was thinking about the plume as I was working with it. It's so soft, it's so nice. I was like, why isn't this on the collar? Then I thought, why isn't it on the collar? I can make it on the collar. So I did. And I picked up, I knew I wanted to do a corresponding rib on the collar because there is also, um, I th I'm sure there's a more technical term for it, but it's like a color work rib, color work striped rib. I'm gonna just show that little picture right there. So you see what I'm saying? I knew I wanted to do that on the collar because it was the only opportunity for the pink and the blue to be next to each other. And I knew I wanted that somewhere in the sweater. So I'm doing it here and I may also do it on the cuff depending on how I'm feeling at the time. And originally my plan was just to have that kind of run through and then do this folded over. And I thought that would look really nice. And then when I got to playing around with the plume in this section, I was like, oh man, I really want that by my face. <laughs> it's so soft. Can I put that on my face slash neck? <laughs> and so I did, it's folded over. So it's not like necessarily the most, I don't know. I, I just, I wanted it. So I did it. <laughs> and there's quite a bit left. I mean, that also has quite a lot of yardage in it. It's a thin lace weight yarn. And so I kind of, freestyled that and I'm really happy with the way it works out. I wanted to not make the juncture so jarring. So what I did is I went blue in the pearl bumps here and then I went into the green um, in the pearl bumps before I brought it in as the, as, um, as the main slash only color. Sorry, there's a little hair on there too. So that's kind of my more aggressive mod, but yeah, I think I'm gonna call it my Alpen Glow Extra because it just feels really a little over the top, but I went with it. You can also see it looks like there's some kind of bubbling and rippling here where my zigzags are but I have done these before and I am pretty confident that it'll block out nicely. I did catch the floats there too, so I'm a little disappointed that the catch isn't like pulling that in as, as flat as I might want it as, not that this is a draft, but like in draft form in my like non-final. <laughs> um, I think I used the term last time too with all this was so my nearly final stage. <laughs> Um, but I, I'm fairly confident that it'll block out, um, nicely, but that was something that I, I've been noticing in other folks pieces as well. And yeah, I'm loving the ghost ranch so much. In fact, I'm loving it so much that I almost just went and got a bunch of ghost ranch in dream state, which they just started making. And I was like, I don't have a project for that. I have a cabinet full of yarn, but I got so excited about it. Um, I also got really excited about how I did not micromanage my, my skein. I just picked which skein I wanted to do from the outside. And I'm so happy with just the kismet of it all because it goes from this green to the blue. And then look, it starts with that really cool army green here and then the pink so it, it feels like there's a real connection and correlation as the pink section comes after that really cool kind of tawny green army green i guess that's all i have to say about that but i'm really really happy with it love my alpen glow and yeah, I think probably I'll do two more rounds before I split for sleeves. It was also so fast and I realized how much I love working in sport weight and doing color work and just kind of going for it. 
Um, it was really, it's a really fun pattern. I really love it. So that was that. And next we have, and there is a knit along for this project. So that's been so fun just to see what everybody is doing at the same time. And I just, I love that. I love feeling part of a bigger group. It's what made me want to start this YouTube channel. And I really encourage you to check out the hashtag. It's the hashtag AlpenGlowCal or DRK AlpenGlowCal. Both of them have quite a few posts and it's just really fun to see what other people are doing and the choices that everyone's kind of making along the way. Oh, whoops. I don't want to misplace this. Oh, and I got a bag for it. I should have mentioned that. Um, this is a new, a new project bag, it's Magner, and they had these at the Rose City Yarn Crawl at the Starlight Knitting Society, and that's the, the shop, Starlight Knitting Society, and they had them at that shop, and I didn't pull the trigger, and as I was thinking of bags for this particular project, because this is actually quite easy train knitting because it's just two colors at a time, I wanted to be able to have something that I wasn't afraid to bring on the train. And some of my other project bags are either much bigger and structured or they're just uh, zippered. And I didn't want to mess with all this mohair in a potential zipper disaster. So I'm really happy with this. One of the things I love about it is that it has a very flat bottom so I can always see what's inside, which is kind of maybe sounds very simple, but it makes a big, big difference. And you just kind of close it up like this. And yeah, this feels Bart proof. And if you know about Bar the Bart trains, you probably know what I'm talking about. Bay Area Transit can be very interesting. So, oh yeah, inspired. Yay! I'm so excited about this next project, getting to talk about it with you all and also getting the chance to see what everyone is doing. I really think of this as the inspiration waterfall because it really, it's, it's like descending levels of joy, right? It's like from one place to the next, it just keeps going and keeps going. It feels infinite right now just to see how the inspiration and the influence is. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if you hear that, but my son apparently just woke up from his nap. Uh, he is singing slash shouting. So we'll see if his dad grabs him or not. We'll see how this goes. I may have to pause and come back. <laughs> um, I am back. Sorry for the slight interruption. My little guy just woke up a bit early from his nap slash didn't really nap, but he is happily playing now and I'm gonna keep on rolling. I think we were interrupted right when I was going to start talking about the knitting for Ellen, or inspired by Ellen Cal, the knit along that was inspired by one of the creators of the Nutidin yarn. Nutidin is a unspun yarn from Sweden, which is led by a team called Honor Ak Air, and their, um, really incredible special fibers. So Ellen made a beautiful colorwork sweater out of a pattern that she found in, uh, it was a free colorwork pattern that she encountered. And it's quite beautiful, fairly simple. And the wonderful women and creators at Knitting a Good Yarn, Jackie and Carmen, took up the call to create a community make and knit along experience just based on this color work. So the idea is you can make anything at all and it's just a chance to explore creativity and to 
just get out of our comfort zones a little bit because a lot of folks are having to self draft. There's a couple of very cool intuitive patterns that people are making. There's also a recipe from Miss Evil Knits who has created a couple different recipes for specifically Neutrogen yarn. And I believe she's created a top down raglan with this really beautiful motif, color work motif. And there's also the original pattern, which Ellen knit, which is a free pattern that's also available and is translated into English. So lots of opportunities both to execute kind of exactly what was done and also to self-draft and also to really kind of explore different avenues for this type of creativity. So I thought, I, I knew I wanted to participate. I loved the spirit of this and I just also love working with Nuta Din Yarn. And I was super inspired by Jackie and Carmen and the way that they talk about knitting practice and the way that they integrate it into community and self-care. And I thought that, that was really beautiful. So I had two thoughts. First, I thought, I want to do a top-down sweater. I want to do the color work. I will probably just do whatever Miss Evil Knits recipe kind of comes out with. I also bought a the top-down sweaters handbook, which is really interesting and I will definitely be dipping more into. But when I started to think about how I wanted to execute the pattern and the kind of gauges that I was getting with Newton and I just didn't think self-drafting was the right call for me. And then this is where this project has really turned into an inspiration waterfall, kind of gone from one to the next, to the next, to the next. So in their latest podcast, Jackie shared what she was making which was a very modern sweater. I forget the name of it. I will absolutely include all the information below and insert a photo here. Really beautiful sweater where the color work is just on the sleeves and the bottom of the piece. And she said that she could apply the same kind of chart sections and it was going to be I, she shared just pieces of it. It looks absolutely stunning. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna make that. <laughs> this is inspiration. I'll be using different colors. It'll be great. I'm just gonna make that. That's awesome. And I also really like the idea of interpreting this very traditional design and fairly, in some ways, fairly traditional fiber in a really modern way and with that kind of approach, both in terms of the cut and then the aesthetics of the garment. And then I was just dilly dallying on Ravelry as one does. And I was looking at patterns by Junko Okamoto because I have never knit one of their patterns and I was really intrigued by so many of them and they were super beautiful. Um, twigs is on my must knit list, but I'm just not ready for it yet. And I was just having fun scrolling around and I came across a pattern I had not encountered before called the acorn. And so that is what I'm going to make. I am making my Inspired by Ellen sweater by combining the acorn by Junko Akimoto and our Akimoto and the here we go. You can see I've just finished the pre-color work section of the yoke. It's so much fun to do a new to den. I have to say it's I really. I haven't explored enough to see if other folks have made this pattern um, in Nutrigen. I'm sure that they have, but I just, as soon as I saw it, I knew this is what I was going to do. So this is a paid for pattern, so I will not be sharing any of the charting details for this piece, but I will say that I was able to 
create my own chart of the inspired by Ellen color work motif to fit ideally in this section. So I am very, very excited about this. As you can see, I have knit the, my kind of main, my first main color is this white. This is snow and I am holding it with a mohair and right now I'm holding it double, but I held it single all through the cables and the raglan increases. I held it single with one strand of mohair and I held it with the mohair because I wasn't able to get gauge without and I thought that holding it double for this section would just be pretty warm for me. So, and because I wanted to hold it single potentially with or without mohair, we'll see when it gets to the color work section. I added in a second, a second strand in the stockinette section because that's also going over my chest and I just wanted that to be very, um, you know, not, not transparent at all, which you do get a little bit of transparency with this white. It feels so good. I'm really excited about it. Very zero prickles, so soft, so beautiful. Just like, I mean, it's like knitting with clouds, this unspun yarn, and it, it feels like you're holding one when you knit the piece. It just, it feels so bouncy and light and beautiful. And I love the way these tiny cables are done. It's so easy and so much fun. And yes, very excited about this. And my second color is going to be this blue, which I'm very excited. So this will be my second main color. And now my question is really, do I do the color work motifs and let me find, sorry, this could be a very choppy episode because I really do need to, oh, here we go. Sorry. So the question is, do I complete the color work motif with just two colors? So with my main color, second main color on the top, or do I potentially add in a third. So hold, please hold collar. One moment. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is the motif I'll be using. So it will be a bit abbreviated. I will not have a lot of repeats of the chevron section. It will go, so um, you read charts bottom up, so, but I'm gonna flip this this way just so we get a sense. This is the top of the sweater in the white and then transitioning into the blue section for the bottom half of the sweater. My question is, do I do blue above and white below. So it's, it's, I think that's quite elegant and it is very much in line with what the original motif of the sweater is. Or do I use this red, which was a lucky charm, but I think I could pull off cause I have a little bit more of it. This beautiful, rich burgundy red. I could do this where it's a different, a third color, right? And then that third color would be in both the main color on top, snow, and the main color on the bottom. And I forget the name of this. I'm sorry, Jackie and Carmen, you're so good at the names and I genuinely don't know. This is just dusty pale blue, but it's so deep and there's so much more going on and I apologize to them whole honor Oc air universe. I just forget. So I, if I could get away with it, I would want to use this really beautiful color with it, but I'm not sure there's enough contrast. And I know everyone's going to just tell me to swatch, but swatching color work in the round in Newtoden is just not my favorite. 
So I'd have to like make something. I could make a hat and I do have plenty. So I think I could do that. Maybe that's what I'll end up doing. But I don't know if you have thoughts, I would really love to hear what you think. So this would be the top white and then the, this contrast would be the blue and then the rest of this part would be blue with the contrast being white. So this would be white above, blue contrast, blue below, white contrast, or mixing it up. I don't know, I do not know. This is my choice. I'm very excited either way though, because I think it's gonna be a really special piece. If you have checked out any of the other acorn sweaters, it is a really big, oversized, it looks almost like wearable art. It's really beautiful. It's. I was kind of concerned it was going to be a bit beyond me, but I think it's pretty straightforward as a pattern too. So I'm super, super, super excited about it. And like I said, it's this kind of waterfall of inspiration. I never would have thought of doing a pattern like this if it hadn't been for Jackie. And I'm just super stoked. I think it's going to be really fun. I mean, it is really fun. I'm having a very good time with it. And I had a really good time making these charts my own. And I think that again, doing this work with Jen and modifying the great gingham raglan and working through kind of my tendency to just want to follow the rules <laughs> and feeling it used to be that I, I kind of felt like color was my way of making something my own. And then I kind of just had to follow the pattern. And now I feel a little bit like I can mess around a little bit more. And it's again, this kind of sense of, of freedom and it's really cool. So I'm very excited about this project. I'm also super excited because now I get to do our little announcement. I announced as I joined this knit along community that I really wanted to contribute some of my new to din yarn in a giveaway, which I am really excited. I actually brought some of it here. Yes, this is tall bark. And it's a really, it's an amazing color. Jackie talked a little bit about it in their last podcast as well. And it's, it really is spectacular. It's super special. I hope that the lighting is okay because it's really hard to explain. <laughs> it is like tree bark. It's, it's, and it smells so good. Oh my gosh. It's so nice. And this is also a very, I think, really nice version of new to den. And I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really happy to share this. I do have a confession. I thought I had an entire 500 grams to share, but it's more like 425, 450. So I weighed everything out. I thought that that's what I had, but um, there are four plates and then some um, pre-wound balls as well. So I'm very excited to share. And because I did miss that um, I've included a few lucky charms for our lucky winner. And this is like so fun. I feel like I, I love giving the announcements. And our giveaway winner is Susie Hannah. Thank you for your wonderful comment. I used a random comment generator and you have won the new to thin yarn. I will be in touch with you directly if I have not already about how to get that to you. And I hope that you have some really wonderful, happy knitting in this knit along. And for everyone who is joining the knit along, 
thank you. I'm so excited to see what you, so many people are already making things. I'm like, oh my gosh, let me get to the color work section because I got to join the crew. And it's so fun to see what everyone's coming up with. So I, I just thank you everyone for sharing. And yeah, I'm just really chugging along. And those are my two whips. I feel like really kind of in control. You know, I got my... Andrea Mowry, top down, like I, I kind of know what is, know what the vibe is, shall I say, because I've done a lot of her, her sweaters because they just tend to fit me really well, I think. And I don't mess around with that drafting. Oh, I should have said that I tried to get, I did try to get a little funky because the acorn sweater has that beautiful cabled yoke. And then a lot of short row increases actually in the back, um, not just the collar, but also the mid back before kind of right around your shoulder blades. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I did less increases in the front and more in the back so it had this kind of billowy shape. And that was my intention. <laughs> But I must have messed up in accounting because last night as I was like going through like convinced I'd done this very cool like edgy hack, it's exactly the same. So I did it as written. <laughs> it's going to be very standard. Um, but I, I am shifting some stuff around just to make sure that my own chart makes sense because the color work of the pattern is just in that top color section and then the bottom color section is all one color but I thought it would be really cool to have it cross that divide and so that's why I'm really debating whether I want the color work to just be the two colors and have it kind of really feel like it's moving in and out of itself or if I just want a third color to exist on both the top and the bottom so yeah it's gonna be a tough choice Please let me know what you think below. I'm super keen to get some details. I, like I said, those are my two whips. Haven't cast on anything else new. Just gonna chug along on those two. See how things roll. I uh, did acquire some more yarn that has not arrived. That is special for my husband. I am knitting him his like, he has his nap sweater, which if you want the details for it, it's in, again, my first episode. He loves that thing. I know it's going to get a ton of wear this fall and winter, um, cozying up around the house, but I thought it'd be nice to have him have something he could probably be more comfortable throwing on with a pair of jeans and actually wearing. So I ordered some really beautiful yarn from the Ireland collection from Explore Knits and Fibers. I have more of her Rockies DK in sash that I'm trying to figure out what to do with because I'm like saving it for something special when like we should just knit with the yarn, right? Like burn the candle, wear the dress, life is for living. But for some reason I'm still in that like, oh, it must, it must have a special place. <laughs> um, so yeah, I bought some special yarn for him for that piece and I'm also planning I as I was going through picking out yarn for these two projects I do I did realize I have a lot of mohair a lot of projects where I was looking for a mohair that would fit as a pairing for something and kind of frankly overbought or bought something that didn't work out but then thought oh, this is a really beautiful color. I'll save it for later. So what I'm thinking of doing is pairing three mohairs together to do a marled mohair sweater. And one designer who um, I've been following for a while but haven't knit any of her patterns is Ozetta. And she's from Oklahoma, I believe. And her marling is really beautiful and I'm super into it. So I might try to do one of her sweaters as a three strand of, mar of mohair marl. And 
that's kind of what I'm thinking I might cast on next. But for the moment, I'm really happy just doing what I'm doing and working on what I'm working on. And that kind of transitions me a little bit into talking about life stuff because I have also noticed I have a little less time for my knitting these days. I am training for a 10K. I used to, I will, I'll back up just a second to say like I love um, knitting and I would say my other hobby is my exercise. I love being active and I've always been really active as a kid. I ran cross country. I did a lot of swimming and water polo and I was a beach lifeguard for a long time in Southern California. So I love sports and athletics and I haven't run in quite a long time. The last race I ran was a 10K <clears throat> which I ran like six months pregnant with my first, with my daughter. And it was awesome. I actually had a great run, but I never really got back into it after she was born. It was just hard to make the time. And I got a bike, for an indoor bike, uh, right after she was born. And so I've been mostly doing indoor biking and some weightlifting and hiking, but not a lot of running. And a friend of mine, has been running more frequently and I really kind of wanted to see how things were with my runs and I, I really love being outside so I thought I should just give it a go again and I signed up for this 10k and I'm really loving my runs so unfortunately though fitting in the training means that I'm having to get up quite a bit earlier, which means I can't stay up as late with my knitting. And I will admit, especially like these last three pieces that are all FOs today, I, I definitely just stayed up too late knitting. Like I don't have that much time. I should be sleeping more <laughs> or in this case, going to bed a little bit earlier, waking up and, and making sure to get my miles in. So I'm a little bit nervous about feeling like I'm not being as productive with my knitting, but I also want to acknowledge this other thing that I really want to keep doing because it's also bringing me a lot of joy and getting me outside and yeah. So that's going on with life stuff. Um, getting really excited for my trip back east with my family and then up to Rhinebeck for the Sheep and Wool Festival. I can't believe it's like a month away, which is very crazy. I also have not flown. Our family has not flown as a family of four because my son was born basically just a few months before lockdown. So I, we will see how this goes. I'm a little nervous, but it's going to be pretty chill. We have direct flights, which I think will really help. And I don't know, he's just so fast, y'all. My son is like the fastest toddler on the planet. That's why I have to do this race because I have to, look, I have to train literally to keep up with this kid. It's real, it's not a joke. Like he's, he's very fast child. <laughs> what else, life-wise? Um, that's about... That's about it. Work is very busy, but also really great. And I do, I love my work colleagues. I'm trying to think if I can maybe find a way to knit for them for the holidays. And I'm thinking there might be like some kerchiefs and scarves and hats in my future. So maybe, maybe I will end up staying up way too late and knitting more. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, that's about it for me, guys. I want to thank you all for sticking with me and hanging out. And I hope everyone has a really, really wonderful week or weekend, wherever you are when you're watching this. Oh, I know what I wanted to add. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to be doing quite a bit of editing on this. Okay. 
I need to talk about my new favorite knitting podcast, which is the Serenity Knitting Society. If you're looking for a new one to watch, I absolutely adore her. It's Alex. She's wonderful. She's from Australia. Um, I like just instantly got on Instagram and messaged her after I watched, I think like one or two of her videos. I was just like, you're fabulous. This is great. I'm here for all of it. And I just, I love that. And I, I feel like I never would have done that maybe if I hadn't also had a podcast or felt more involved in the community. And I just, there's this sense of welcome everywhere that's really inviting. So if you're looking for a new podcast to watch, I highly recommend the Serenity Knitting Society. It's basically everything I would want in a community driven special creator space. It's really, really fun. So that's my little tip. And yeah, I suppose that's it. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their, like I said, week or weekend. Take great care of yourself and keep putting yourself out into the world because it's such a better place when you do. Thank you all and talk to you soon. Happy knitting. Bye.